pray to God. Guys, come expect your God. Is there uh, something you want to leave here at the altars? Get victory over? Would you all stand with me? Father, we just we love coming together on a Wednesday evening, Lord, and spending time with you. Father, we just pray that this time is anointed and uh, everything that we need in our lives you can provide tonight, Lord. join together as we praise God this, this evening.
to tamper you. Maybe some of you are going through a process right now, but there is victory. We fight from victory. Jesus is victory, and the battle belongs to him. So whatever it is, give it up to him. Let him fight your battle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
powerful day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Did you know just speaking his name makes a demon tremble? Shout, Trump, and the devil wouldn't move. Amen. You could shout, Joe. Yeah. Nothing happened. But you mentioned the name of Jesus. Amen. And just the mention of the Eurometric shouting, just the mention of his name. Demons tremble. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that being said, when we go to talk to our Lord tonight, yes. whatever you need is, yes. you ought to know Hallelujah. that God can meet that need. Hallelujah. And I know there's many in this room that have different needs. Some have physical needs. How many have physical needs? Spiritual needs. Financial needs. Emotional needs. Amen. Yes, we are a needy people. But he said he could supply all of my need according to his riches. All of my need, our problem, we like to lump them all in one bag. He takes them one at a time. All of my need, according to his riches.
also uh, on Easter Sunday morning, 8.30, we're having our uh, Easter sunrise breakfast at 8.30. Amen. Brother Ken, we got to get together and figure out what we're doing on that. I don't know why we have it, but I just figured it all come to place. We'll all fall in, in the place. Amen. And it will. And uh, Brother Michael's going to have his hands full of cooking the eggs that day and the potatoes and the steaks. No. No steaks that day. Amen. But uh, we look forward to that, that day. I got something I want you to jot down on your calendar is happening on the second of March. What? June. 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 June the second. Yeah, that's what you. Thank you. We have a, a one day revival with the man the man clan. And that that's a group from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, you can look them up on online and, and get a sound for them. But they, they sing uh, country gospel, bluegrass gospel, and uh, he's a, a revival preacher. So we're looking forward to it uh, uh, on the 2nd of June. 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 Thank you. I usually have that stuff written down in front of me, but... Oh, there it is. No. Uh, so, uh, pick up a bulletin in the calendar. You've been, that's what's going on. The Michael, are you fired up? Are you ready? I'm here. <laughs> we did miss you. God bless you for being here. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Good. Praise God. Good. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for who you are. Thank you for being able to come and study your word. Yes. And we ask that you help, it, help us to apply it to our heart and to our lives, you, Lord, that be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're in Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. And start off with uh, Thomas Jefferson gave a, a state of the state address for the state of Virginia he wrote it is error alone which needs support of the government truth can stand by itself mm -hmm. truth can stand by itself mm -hmm. government gets involved in stuff things go south in a hurry <laughs> When Jerusalem was under siege in 606 to 586 BC, error had the support of the government and religious leaders and those who were in exile agreed with them. Their battle cry was, we will never give in to the Babylonian army. The Lord will never allow Gentiles to destroy the city or to defile the temple. That's what they're believing in. And that's what they're being told by their leaders. There were two dissenting voices at this time. One dissenting voice was Jeremiah, who was located in Jerusalem, and Ezekiel, who was located with the captives in Babylon. Both in Ezekiel's illustrated sermons and Ezekiel spoken message, he warned against trusting in false hope that the religious leaders and city rulers were proclaiming. No matter what these leaders were saying, they were not proclaiming proclaiming what God had ordered. The city and temple and the land were doomed. The people believed in a false hope and not depending on the word of God. If the people, if the nation depended on and believed on the word of God, they would have never been sent into captivity. You can say that the nation imprisoned themselves by their choice of not following God completely. How do we imprison ourselves by not following God completely? You better felt prisoner to their own actions? Yeah. 
Michael? Yes. Well, our actions have consequences. So when we decide to do something that's not according to God's will, it will have consequences sooner or later. Right. You can run, but you can't hide from God. <laughs> Amen. Jonah proved that. He ended up on a cruise he didn't want to take. <laughs> yeah. Here in this 12th chapter of Ezekiel, Ezekiel exposes the errors that brought bondage and ruin to the nation. And we're going to, I'm going to read Ezekiel 12, 1 to 16. The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be that they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. Then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight, as stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth at even in their sight, as, and as they that go forth into captivity. Dig down through the wall in their sight, and carry out thereby. In the sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, and thou shalt not see the ground, for I have set thee for a sign into the house of Israel. And I did so as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day as stuff for captivity, and, e and in the evening I digged to the wall with my hand, and I brought it forth in the twilight, and I bear it upon my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, hath not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What doest thou? Say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, this burden concerneth the prince of Jerusalem and all the houses of Israel that are among them. Say I, say, I am your sign, like I have done, so shall it be done unto them. They shall remove and go into captivity, and the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulders in the twilight, and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry out their wife. He shall cover his face, that he see not the ground with his eyes. My net also I will spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, though he shall die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him, and all his bands, and I will draw out the sword after them. And they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. But I will leave a few men of them from the sword, and from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they might declare all their abominations among the heathen, whether they come, and they shall know that I am the Lord. There's a lot of stuff here to go over. When Ezekiel, when God called Ezekiel to be into the prophetic ministry, God told Ezekiel that the people were a rebellious people who were spiritually blind and deaf. Do we have spiritually blind and deaf people nowadays? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. To understand God's truth, we must be able to be obedient to His will. At this point in time, the nation of Israel is far from being obedient. How far are we as individuals from being obedient? Are we always obedient? No. No? We all have our quirks, our downfalls, our rebellious attitude. At times. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's like the little boy in school, the teacher kept telling him, sit down, sit down, sit down. And, and the little boy goes, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to not going to do it. Finally, the teacher got him to sit down, and he's thinking to himself, I may be sitting down, but I'm still standing up on the inside. <laughs> Are we like that? Quite often. John seven seventeen tells us, If any man would do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. In Psalms 25, 8 to 10, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he will teach sinners in the way. 
The meek he will guide in judgment, and the meek he will teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as he keeps his covenant and his testimonies. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. This kind of conveys the idea of a, a wagon or a chariot or some cart going down the road and creating ruts in the road. When that chariot gets into that rut or the wagon gets in the rut, it follows that, that direction that the wagon is going. We are to follow the path of mercy, like we're in God's rut. His, his path of mercy and truth will protect us. Amen. In verses 1 through 16 that we just read in Ezekiel, Ezekiel conveys two messages. First, he gave an illustrated sermon by acting it out, and then he gave a speaking message from the Lord. The first illustrated message can be found in verses 3 through 7. Therefore, son of man, prepare these, these stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be that they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. He's telling Ezekiel, pack your trash. You're going to get out of here. And take it out of the house where everybody can see that you're taking it out of the house. And thou shalt bring forth thy stuff in their sight as stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth even in their sight as they that go forth into captivity. So Ezekiel went out, took his stuff out of his house, took it down the street, and hid it. Now God's telling them, dig through the wall in their sight and carry out thereby, and their sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, that thou see not the ground, for I set thee for a sign to the house of Israel. And I did as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day, and stuff for captivity. And in the evening I digged through the wall with my hand, and brought it forth in the twilight, and bare it upon my shoulder in his sight. Here Ezekiel was acting out what the king Zedekiah and the princes and elders of Jerusalem were going to do. They were going to pack all their stuff and wait on the cover of evening, dig through the walls of Jerusalem, grab their stuff, and take off. So they wouldn't have to endure the captivity or the destruction of the Babylonian army. Well, that didn't work out for many by doing that. King Zedekiah was pursued once they find out that once the Babylonian army found out that he took off in the middle of the night, you would say, they pursued him and he was captured. After the capture, King Zedekiah, after the capture of King Zedekiah, his sons were killed in front of him. The Lord says he's going to bring the sword against them. And that's exactly what happened. Then after his sons were killed in front of him, and, the, and other princes of the city were killed, and King Zedekiah had his eyes gouged out and was taken to Babylon as a prisoner and eventually died in captivity. God said he'd be taken captive but not see where he was going. The king and princes of Jerusalem were not captured by the net that the Babylonians ensnared them with, but it, was, but it was God's net that captured them. The Babylonians were not successful based upon their own devices, but were successful as they were used by God to fulfill God's will. King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians were instruments of God's punishment. When God sets about doing things, God's words says it's done and it's finished. It will happen. Had King Zedekiah listened to the prophet Jeremiah, King Zedekiah, the city and the city and the temple would have been spared. But now the people that survived the siege would be scattered around the Babylonian Empire. Ezekiel 12, 14 to 16. 
and I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him in all his bands. And I'll draw out the sword after them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries, for I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen, whether they come, and they shall know that I am the Lord. God has always preserved a remnant of his people. They are his chosen people. God allowed the survivors to go to Babylon as a witness of the fact that due to their evil deeds, they deserve the punishment God sent to the nation of Israel. The first Jewish diaspora actually occurred in 722 BC when the king of Syria conquered the northern kingdom of Israel. Then roughly 136 years later, the kingdom of Judah was taken into captivity, which resulted in the second Jewish diaspora. It has been approximately 2,746 years since all the Jews that have been scattered throughout the world have returned to their homeland. Not all of them have still returned. Due to their disobedience, due to the sin to God by not keeping the Sabbath, by not treating a fellow man right, God said they'll be taken into captivity and they'll be dispersed throughout the land. And this is where Syria and Babylon were the main instruments in this dispersal of the Jewish people. Today, there are many more Jews that remain scattered around the world. The current Jewish population outside of Israel is more than one is located in Israel. Here's a breakdown of Jewish population centers around the world. Israel has 41% of the Jews in the world. The United States has 41% of the Jews in the world. They mainly live in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and Miami. Canada has 3% of the Jewish world population. France has 2%. The United Kingdom has 2%. Germany has 2%. Russia has 2%. And Argentina has between 1% and 2%. All other remaining countries have 45% of the Jewish population in the world. So there's still, God is still calling them home. But uh, you can say they're probably still a rebellious people. They don't think, the, they, don't, they believe that the Messiah didn't come. But he came right there in front of them. But they saw him not. Right. Mm -hmm. First part of John, Jesus came into the dark world and they saw him not. They were spiritually blind and spiritually deaf. Ezekiel 12, 17 to 18. More, more, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink that water with trembling, and with carefulness. And this was his second illustrated sermon. God told him to eat and, and shake while he was eating, and tremble, as if he is in fear. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel, they shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment, that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, the days are prolonged, and every vision faileth. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I'll make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, These days are at hand in the effect of every vision, for there shall be no more vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For in the Lord I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass, and shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word, and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesies of the times that are far off. Therefore say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, 
There shall be none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. When God speaks, his word will come true. Amen. In the New Testament, we see that the people are saying that, well, his second coming, it's, just far, it's way off. we got plenty of time to take care of things. I heard this weekend. Yeah, me and the Lord are tight. When I'm ready, I'll get right. And I'll go to heaven. That is far from the truth. <laughs> you, you never know if you got time to get things right. You repent, confess, repent, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. Sure, there's things that you're going to have to work out. Like Steve said, we've got to suffer the consequences of our errant behaviors. But God will be there with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like King David said in Psalms 22, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shallow death, I shall fear no evil. Because Amen. God. Is. The octave word is walking through the valley of shadow Amen. of death. Amen. Not wallowing in your despair or your grief or your sad circumstances. The second illustrated message most likely took place the day after his first illustrated message. In this message, Ezekiel ate a meager meal of bread and water. And during this meal, he shook as if trembling in fear. Ezekiel was acting out what the inhabitants of Jerusalem would go through during the Babylonian siege. They would eat in fear, knowing that they ate what they ate may be their last meal. A couple of chapters ago, we went through Ezekiel. And what were they eating? Oh. Besides hmm. bread and water. They resorted to cannibalism. They're eating their young, eating their old. Mm -hmm. That's how far in despair and distraught the city was. There's no food. Mm -hmm. So here, God's saying, this may be your last meal. The theme of the second message was that was that the certainty and nearness of God's punishment was near. The message of Ezekiel did not occur immediately, but it seemed to drag on. The people ignored the warning and fell for the message of the false prophets. Much like today, people ignore the warning that the end is near. How do we, how can we tell whether the end is near or not? Sign of the times. You can read about Matthew chapter 24. The wars, rumors of war. We have that all the time now. Last couple of days in the news, Vladimir Putin is threatening nuclear war. Again. Again. Again and again. And, uh, According to the news articles, Vladimir has no successor in place. No one wants to be a successor to him. <laughs> Look what happened to the guy that spoke out against him. <laughs> Second Peter 2, 3, Therefore saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God, There, sh there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore, the word which I spoke shall be done, saith the Lord God. In Matthew 16, 3. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Mm -hmm. How many of us have gone outside, looked out the front door before we go to work, and discern what the weather's like? We do it all the time. We know it's going to be bad. Our front door, we look straight at Mount Rose and Slide Mountain. If there's dark clouds over that and there's a slight breeze, we know that the storm is coming. <laughs> Here, the people of God didn't believe that God's punishment was coming. They couldn't see what Jeremiah and Ezekiel were telling them, were warning them against. 
God made it clear that there'd be no more delay. <coughs> Jeremiah 1.12 says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Habakkuk 2.3 Try spelling that without looking at it. <laughs> for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Mm -hmm. You know, at the house, when it comes feeding time, our, come our two boys, Winston and Oliver, two six-month-old golden retrievers. They know the word eat. <laughs> you hear that word eat, their ears perk up and they come running into the kitchen. As I fill in their bowls, they're all eager, they do their happy dance. I get to the place where I put their bowls down, I tell them to wait for it. Yeah. Wait for it. I put their bowl of foods down into the theater area, the theater containers, and neither one touches it. They're, they're looking upon me until I give them the word, okay, and they know they can eat. We, as children of God, when God says something's going to happen, to wait for it. It's going to happen. What are we supposed to be doing? Hallelujah. Like the two boys, Winston and Oliver, we keep our eyes on the Lord. Yes. We look for Him for our direction and for our strength. Isaiah 55, 8 to 11, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and seed to the, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, Hallelujah. and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I sent it to. Hallelujah. Amen. God's Thank word you. will accomplish what God said it will. God made it clear by the word spoken by Ezekiel that his word will come to fruition. Ezekiel 12, 28. Therefore say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord. Chapter 13 of Ezekiel deals with false prophecy. Ezekiel talks about lying prophets and lying sorcerers. Not only was Jeremiah dealing with false teachings in Jerusalem, Ezekiel was also dealing with false teachings in Babylon. The false prophets and sorcerers were not receiving word from God, but from cultic practices. Ezekiel 13, 7. Had ye not seen in a vain vision, and had ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken? Here's God calling out the false prophets and sorcerers. What you're proclaiming, I didn't say. I gave my word to my prophets, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, to speak for me, not you guys. Does anybody know what divination is? <laughs> Wizardry. Wizardry? It's the practice that seeks to foresee or foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge, usually by the interpretation of omens or by the aid of supernatural powers. You have people that do divination by reading tea leaves. Some smoke the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> provide unnatural words. Here in verse 7, God is saying the false prophets are using cultic, cultic powers to tell the captives what to expect. They were given false hope when there is no hope to be had. What does God say about divination? Leviticus 19, 26. 
Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment, nor observe times. Because in, in uh, that same passage in the complete Jewish study Bible reads it like this. Do not eat anything with blood. Do not practice divination or fortune telling. Deuteronomy 18, 9 and 14. Before they moved to the land, this is what God told them. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that the for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the with the Lord thy God for those nations which thou shalt pass, hearkening unto observers of times and to, to, to finders. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. God warned them not to rely on witches or diviners. But what did they do? What did King Saul do? Consulted with a witch. He sought, sought out the witch of Endor. And what happened to the witch of Endor? She had the bejeebers scared out of her when Samuel showed up. <laughs> Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. In the Geneva Study Bible, this phrase means to be without hypocrisy or mixture or false religions. You are to stand before God without hypocrisy. You are to stand before God without mixture, not incorporating worldly practices in the worship of God. You are to stand before God without any false religion in your heart. And here was a couple of chapters ago, Ezekiel seen the vision of the 70 elders in the secret room in the temple worshiping idols that's a big sin against God and he came outside the temple at the temple doors there was another 24 worshiping the sun God with their backs turned to Jerusalem to the temple to the holy of holies then they had women in their court worshiping Tamaz God had warned him not to do that and they probably wonder why. Why are we being captured? Why are we being surrounded? Why are we starving and have to go through pestilences? As the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 1 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We are to be holy and without blame. Amen. If we're not holy, whose fault is that? Ours. Ours. Amen. And some of us are just hard-headed or knuckleheads, and we rebel. We have a daughter that's saying, I just have to do things the hard way until I learn it. Why? Why do you got to do things the hard way? Learn from other people's mistakes. So you don't have to pay the penalty of what they were doing. They don't want you to learn from. Amen. I heard a, a thing on the, on the radio today. I listen to CSN radio a lot when I'm driving. And they're talking about bullies in school. Where do bullies pick up their behavior? At home. At home. You see the dad calling people names on the freeway that cut them off and they get mad and floorboard their hot rods or the cars and try and cut them off and create road rage you see their moms at the grocery stores yelling at the clerk yelling at you know the poor bag boy that's trying to bag our groceries there's no wonder kids pick up this behavior and they pass it on their parents are teaching them to become bullies if you're godly parents, you wouldn't be sitting in that 
setting that kind of example. Second Peter 3.14 tells us, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. It's an active lifestyle that we have to choose in order to worship God. It takes work to do good. Amen. The spiritual wall of the nation fell into ruin. The people's attention to the worship of the true and living God died to their selfishness and the attention of the false prophets, which proclaimed that the people wanted to hear. This lack of attention towards God led to their destruction. Over and over, God has sent prophets to warn them of their errant ways, but no one listened. The sources that Ezekiel mentioned were claiming to be prophecies, but in fact, there were charlatans looking to increase the size of their fortunes. These sorcerers, like the false prophets, only cared about their gain by preying on other people's fears. Do we see that in Adi? Mm -hmm. People lining their pockets with money, preying on people's fears? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These false prophets and sources did not expose the sins of the people. They kept them from trusting the true and living God for their protection and well-being. In time, these false prophets and sources will meet their ends at the hands of the God they refuse to serve. Ezekiel 14, 1-11 Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart, put their stomach on the block of the iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and put the stumbling blocks of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through the idols. Therefore saith the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel, or the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the seven block of his iniquities before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I'll set my face against that man, and I'll make him a sign and a proverb, and I'll cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I'm the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I'll stretch out my hands upon him, and destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, the punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. That the house of Israel may go no more straight from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may, may be their God, saith the Lord God. Here in this first 11 verses of Ezekiel, we find that the leaders came before Ezekiel to see what Ezekiel was up to. They weren't there to hear the word of God, or what God's will was for them. They want to see the nutcase and what he's going to do next. God had given his Ezekiel two messages. In verses 1 to 5, God had told Ezekiel that some of these leaders were the same ones that Ezekiel saw in the vision of worshiping false gods in the temple. These leaders did not come to hear God's word. They came for religious entertainment. How many people go to church for religious entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where pastor's wife in Houston several years ago said, we don't come to worship God. We come to make ourselves feel good. Mm -hmm. If that ain't entertainment, I don't know what is. They were like the people Isaiah spoke about, people drawing near to God in order to hear the word of God, 
but not drawing near to God with their hearts. Idolatry places a stumbling block before one's spiritual eyes, thus leading to a, tra to a tragic fall. It is not likely that Christians today would have, would have love in their hearts for actual images, but anything that replaces God in our affections and in our disobedience is an idol. God is revealing the hidden sins in the leader's heart. God had told Ezekiel that his chosen people had left him to follow false gods and that God would punish them in order to recapture their hearts. If Christ is the Lord of our hearts, then there will be no room for idols. If Christ is the Lord in our hearts, Amen. then there will be no room for idols. Amen. In the next six verses of Ezekiel that we read, God is calling for repentance. Repentance is a change of mind. It means turning from sin and turning to God. In verse 7, God is calling individuals to repent. God will judge each sinner personally, and some of them he will use as an example. God allows things, allows situations to come before the people to test them for their loyalty to him. God knows what's in the heart of the, what's in the human heart. But the problem is we do not know what's in our hearts. The Bible tells, I think it's either Psalms or Proverbs, that a man's heart is continually evil. We have to recognize that fact. It takes us to work out our salvation to be pleasing to God. Working out is worshiping God. Repenting when we sin. Confess when we're wrong. It is the condition of the heart that determines the response to God's test. For God deals with people according to their hearts. Psalms, I'll end it with this. Psalms 18, 26 to 27. The pure heart, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with a forward, forward, thou wilt show thyself forward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt bring down high looks. That was the King James. Hard to understand a lot of times, but I use the King James because there's strong has a good concordance to look things up. So you look at other. Bible tells us use scriptures to interpret scriptures. I'm going to read this out of the Complete Jewish Study Bible. With the merciful, you, you are mercy. With a man who is insecure, you are sincere. With the pure, you are pure, but with the crooked, you are cunning. People afflicted, you say, but high eyes, you humble. It is a terrible thing to be humbled by God. And we don't want to put ourselves in that position, be humbled in that way. And you definitely don't want to be used as an example. That is it for tonight, Pastor. Praise God. Thank you. You know, I was thinking as you were sort of reading these verses, I kept saying something. These people were committed to committing adultery, idolatry. They, they were still doing the things that sent them to Babylon. And, uh, there will be a reckoning day in all of our lives. And I like what you said earlier, that uh, a lot of people think we have plenty of time. And uh, we don't have plenty of time. Uh, at any moment, uh, no matter how old you are, but we are just a, we're a heartbeat away from our maker. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be anything or that, that causes that. So uh, it's better to be ready mm -hmm. to go than try to get ready to go. Mm -hmm. you know? Amen. 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 You don't have your. Uh, mm. Well, we're not packing any bags to go. I know that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're not ready to go, you may not have time to get ready. The Bible says, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. You know, it happens. Uh, the way you live now determines who 
we gonna live forever? Well, you know, you might have a man of the thief type of confession and get right with God and you're on your deathbed and that's fine. Those happen. I've led a lot of people to the Lord on their deathbed. But I got news for you. Some people die before they know it. So be ready. Amen. And don't stay in Babylon and do the things that got you there Amen. in the first place. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Amen. 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 You just stand with someone with the building. Father, we do thank you for your word thank tonight, you. and we pray, God, that it would find lodging in our, in our heart. As we read that passage today, God, it would not return void, but it would go forth and prosper. Yes. And we pray, God, that that word would prosper in our hearts. God, let us realize the day in which we live in, yes. and God, that we are yes. not yes. just in the end times, yes. but we're in the end moments. Yes. Father, we ask, God, Amen. keep your hand upon us, bring us back ready to worship you on Sunday, keep us safe throughout the week, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.